So here's what I got. These are made by Seth Hurst of Hurst Reptiles. He is based uh, in Erie County, Ohio. And they're 24 inches tall. They have a five inch lip at the bottom so it can have a nice deep substrate. And I really like how he has these bulky uh, hinges. Um, nice and strong, easy to use. They're not gonna break. This is the area that we're gonna be working on today. This is where we'll put those four by two by two enclosures. And in there is gonna go Jet. I've had Jet for four years. Got her out of an aquarium shop in Tennessee. And she's probably quadrupled in size since I got her. I use open top cages for my homianas. Switching to closed chambers for these enclosures but because this girl got sick last year. She got some type of respiratory infection and had to go on antibiotics and I want to keep her nice and warm this year and nice and humid throughout the winter so she does not have a recurrence of that illness. Then we have this animal which is Dusky and, and Dusky hasn't grown very much in the four years that I've had him. Yes, Dusky is a male, believe it or not. And I can tell you why Dusky is a male because, well, I saw what he has. And Dusky by far is my most friendly homiana. And Dusky's basically lived in a quarantine uh, tub for four years. And it's time to give Dusky a wonderful, wonderful enclosure. Eventually, I want to pair up Jet, who's named Jet because she's Jet Black, with Dusky so that I can produce yet another bloodline of Conexus homiana. To make this go as smooth as possible, I'm gonna see if I can move the whole thing. No, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna have to put her in her QT uh, tub. There you go. I'm gonna have to move this. Okay. That'll fit there nicely. Gonna use this big chunk of Mopani wood in the new enclosure. That's the soaking tub. Break this guy down. And there we go. Guys, I'm using concrete blocks this time for a stand. I don't have the time to make a nice wood stand. It'll come eventually. Okay, now we're actually gonna measure it. It's uh, 46 and a half, so we need to spread those puppies out. There it is, that's perfect. Thank you. Once again, we did the magic thing and boom, enclosure. It's a gorgeous fall day. Halloween decorations going up. Enclosures going up. Hey, Weston. The cake. Bam. There we've got them. We have 28 watt and 40 watt. First time using these heat panels from Vivarium Electronics. 40 watt. Oh, there it is. Woo! Thank goodness. I thought Will forgot my t shirt, but. Capitola Farms. So here is the 40 watt. thermostat that will include sticker there's the plug pretty simple I'd kind of like to take one apart and see exactly what it does 
I'm gonna mount these on the top of the enclosures. Okay, let's look at the 28 one. 28 watt one next. Okay. Yep, so it is smaller, rectangular. Boy, there's not much to these, but um, obviously I need to read the instructions. Panel must be securely mounted this side toward and do not cover panel face. See website or owner's manual. Reptile basics. We'll just mount those on the top of the enclosure. Really excited to see how these work. What I've learned from reading the instructions is that these guys require a burn-in period after which they won't produce any odors, but we've got to plug them in for a bit and let them heat up and let that plastic out gas for a bit. Some cords. Unplug. Arcadia plugs. Then we're just going to plug them in. And see what happens. Separate them out a bit. So we're gonna let these run six to twenty-four hours, and they definitely do smell. And guys, they're hot. I mean, you touch that half a second, it's it's warm. You put your hand on there for a while, uh, it's gonna be real hot. I'm gonna go get the temp gun and see what temperature. It is. 175, 165, that's hot. Now, I can definitely feel that heat rising up. And it smells in here, guys. Do this. Gotta do this little clip. So guys, we have two, are these 48s or 36s? I'm pretty sure these are 36s. Six percent UVB, so we've got one of those. And then we have a second 6% UVB. These are gonna go in some Homeana enclosures. And we have shade dweller kits, very nice. Those will also go in some PVC cages. That one's open, interesting. Um, and then finally a little surprise. We have a package of their uh, Earth Pro A multivitamins. Um, I listened to a great podcast about these, I don't remember which company it was. I forget whose podcast, but essentially these are formulated from natural minerals. So it's a way to get. 
yet. Great, great things into your your animals. So, um, kind of an interesting ingredient list: calcium carbonate, mineral clay, vegetable protein powder, carrot powder, carotenoids from algae, vitamin B and B pop. The purpose of these vitamins really is to give something that's more natural, like the tortoises would actually consume in the wild. Get the minerals directly from the soil uh, that's coating the plants they might be eating, or the bugs that they're also eating. Nice and toasty in here. Things are a bit messy. Uh, but let's take a look where these are gonna go. This is where they're gonna go. And I got the heat panels put in. Um, you can't see that at all. Reflection. Let's open the door. The heat panel is installed. Or this is in here. But we need a little illumination. Mounting brackets, cord. Loop connector cord. And then the light itself, and yeah, it is, it is the 32 inch, not the giant one. So that will fit in here. Now, and uh, we will install it up on the ceiling like this. Kind of put it in the front. Yeah, that'll work. So I'm just gonna figure out how we're gonna do that. The most important thing that I've learned doing this project is to put your heat panel and put your fluorescent light in your enclosures before you put any animals and it's so much easier to do it with the cage upside down that's really the only way to do it without going crazy so we've got this in front here the cord going back i'm just going to use one of those little brackets to Fasten the cord to make sure the cord to the light isn't running right next to the heat panel. I'm getting better at mounting these things. There we go, you can see the reflector. Now, enclosure number two. The stall is going well, but I wanted to stop. One thing that's really helpful is that it looks like Arcadia is putting these little uh, 3 8 of an inch screw in here, and that is great to install these in half inch PVC enclosures. Before, I would have to get a Dremel because the screws would poke out the top and cut that bit of screw off. So thank you, Arcadia, great improvement. So there we have number two set up. We have a 40 watt heat panel and this nice Arcadia fixture that we're gonna put the 6% UVB bulb in. And the heat panel will run off the thermostat. So I'm hot, we're gonna call it a day and finish up tomorrow. Now I'm getting the power situation ready. I've got a smart plug and I've got some power strips, but I couldn't do two power strips because they both won't fit in there. So we're gonna try this strategy. Two lights will just plug in up there. We'll put these beautiful bulbs in. If you've never used the T5s, what make them stand out is just how thin they are. They're teeny, teeny, tiny. When I first looked at them, I thought there was something wrong.
Just look how thin that is. It's more importantly than anything, you always want to make sure your, your fixture is off before installing the bulb. I doubt you'll be able to see any of this, but we'll insert it up into the grooves and twist. Do the other side. And then twist it in. Okay. There we go. And let's turn the power strip on. And then we need to go into the app and turn the smart plug on. And we should have some Power strip should be on, and now we will just turn on the switch for the light bulbs. Yay, hey, look at that. Of course, you can't see anything because it's a giant reflection, but there we go. We've got light. Put the light at the front. I think that'll light up the tortoises nicely. Let's do this one. Three, two, one. Yeah, hey, hey, look at that. Uh, nice UVB light in the front. If they want it, shadier in the back. Let's scape these guys. Um, we're gonna use cocoa chips for this enclosure. In case we're already in here, we're using it. this big nice thing of Mopani wood, which is actually an African species. And I have two fake plants that I've mounted in concrete, quick crete, um, just to kind of sparse things up and give her a hiding spot. We're gonna give, uh, get her water dish for her. Right now it's empty, but we'll get some water in there soon. Put that up here towards the front. I love using those water dishes. They learn how to eat. Uh, they learn how to drink from them very quickly. And then here's Jet. Jet's a big female. She's uh, tripled in weight since I had, uh, since I got her way back in uh, 2018. And she's a very dark hinchback. And I'm going to this setup to make sure I can make it nice and humid all winter and a little bit warmer. This girl had to take to the vet for a respiratory infection last year. So there's your new enclosure. I hope you like it, Jet. Okay, next up is Dusky. Dusky, I got back in June of 2018. It was the first hinge back that I had gotten in like 20 years and she was really really tame but really really small and she took forever to grow she took forever to eat i worked so carefully with her eventually i'll get some more in here but that's gonna be jet set up sorry that's gonna be dusky set up dusky has a nice hide well add she can go in there i don't have as many plants for her but we'll get some live plants i think here she is this is my most personable homiana this is just a fantastic tortoise um even though she's wild caught um, she came to me super tame and is friendly and, and inquisitive but she just wouldn't eat I had to start her on live slugs. That is the only thing that I could do to get Dusky to eat. And it took her forever to grow. And you can see between these two lines right here and right there, that space where my thumb is, that is how much she has grown since she's been with me. And then on the bottom of her shell, you can see also that lighter coloration between the scoots. She's done all of that growing in captivity since 2018. But 
um, Jet, sorry, Dusky, who I used to think was a girl, flashed uh, her package or his package um, once when she flipped upside down. You can see that the plastron is not concave at all, but I think this is gonna be, I think Dusky is gonna be a boy. Why is her name Dusky? Because I got her in Sandusky from someone that uh, just couldn't figure her out. In the end, she was keeping her too warm. So Dusky and Jet hopefully will be a pair one day. And let's see here. Dusky, I need to get a water bowl, or his water bowl rather. Um, have it switched her over. Um, we'll get some more substrate and let me go get some plants. So one of the reasons to get these nice tall enclosures is so that we can have tall plants. And these are gonna be temporary to help give a nice dark uh, spot. For, come on, focus. These dracenas are gonna be temporary, but that's why I like having tall enclosures um, for these bigger animals, because we're trying to provide them shade. And they need bright, but they also need shade. And these dracenas will give them that. So there is Dusky. Let's close Dusky up. Just, I love these handles. Thank you, Hearst Reptiles, Seth Hearst, for making these amazing enclosures. Two new enclosures for two very special tortoises. We'll catch you next time. Happy Hinchbacks.